Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will model uh, the dashboard. So uh, I looked through my photos, the reference that I have, and I think the best one uh, that I can line up with the dash that I made is this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and line this up to uh, the dash that I modeled. And you can do that using a camera. So we'll just go into create, cameras, make a camera. We can look through the camera like this and try and line it up just like that. Now, uh, this is my camera, so I just call it Proj Cam, like this projection camera. Let's make a, a texture. So we need to uh, use a texture to project to the uh, onto the surface. And then we'll use the camera as our projection. So this is the dash. Let's so just call it dash so we know what it is. Uh, now let's make a just a Lambert. So we'll just make a Lambert like this. I'm just going to isolate it so we're only looking at that. And then I need to make a, a file texture, but I need to make it as projection. So you just right click on the file and click create as projection like that. We'll get a bunch of nodes here. You have your place 2D node, you have the file node, which we can choose our texture. So I have this dash PNG. This is our projection node. Uh, and this is the node that connects the image and the projection together. So if we select the Lambert, we can take this and connect it to the color and then select the dashboard and then assign there. Press six and you'll see it looks like that. Now the thing is, it's not lined up of course, so we need to line line up the projection uh, to the camera, which is pretty easy. You just uh, control A, which will open up the attribute for the projection node. You can also select it in here as well. Uh, and then you can use these to navigate, right? So uh, these buttons will go up and down the chain. So if I select the place 3D texture here, press this button, this will take me to the projection node that's connected down the chain. I can then select the projection type to perspective, go to the camera projection attributes and choose our projection cam shape like that. Now in here, our camera that we're using right now is gonna it will, is now lining up to this projection. Now it's kind of hard to do it like this. So I'm gonna just come, go out of here. I'm gonna select the perspective camera here like this. Uh, I'm going to hide my image planes because they're in the way, like that. And then this camera, we can actually use to line up our projection. So I'm going to set it to zero, like that. And the rotation here, uh, I'm going to set that to zero, too. Let's set this to zero. I want to basically start from scratch. So this will be 180, like that. And then we can rotate down, like this then move it left and right until we get it to the center. Rotate like this. And then we can actually scale the camera. Let's see, I wanna make sure it's centered. So I'm looking at this image here. I can see that it's kind of centered. I can turn a wireframe, which is this button, and then line that up. I want to show you some of the processes I'm going to use to create these, and then uh, some of the other ones will be a time lapse of me modeling. So I want to make some of these circles, uh, which are pretty. It looks like it's difficult to do, right? The surface is curved, but it's actually pretty simple if you try to understand how, uh, what the process is to do it. So if I uh, select a bunch of faces here, and these faces are basically, if I delete them. Uh, it'll create a hole, right? So if I delete these faces, it makes a hole. But if I make that hole a circle now, um, all I need to do is count how many edges that's gonna take. So that's 16, right? So I just undo that. By the way, the camera can move by accident, so I'm gonna key it. Just press S on frame one, uh, the projection camera. This way, if we accidentally move the camera, we can just move the timeline and it'll snap back. All right, so. Uh, now that I know I need a, a 16 edges, I can make a cylinder. By the way, uh, when I make an object, right, I know I just made a cylinder, right? I can see it appear in the outliner. Uh, if you press W and then hold V, you can then just use the middle mouse button and drag it into view. You don't have to zoom out and try and find it and all the other stuff.
So we line this up. What I like to do is I like to get it close to the surface like this. And then I can snap my pivot here. I can rotate it until it feels like it's evenly, uh, it's penetrating evenly all around. So I know it's mostly planar. Now because we're using a projection, you know, our uh, our image is not perfectly round, but that's okay. All right, so I want to be able to add a hole in here. So I'm going to make the cylinder, place it like this, give it a subdivision of axis, make sure it's 16. We can then try and line it up using uh, the Y rotation and get it as evenly distributed as possible. And what I'm looking for is faces are really close, like this edge and this edge are close together. So I want those to connect. So I line up mostly those, the rest should work out fine. So not worry about that. And then what I'm going to do is push it out like this. I'm going to duplicate and save. So I'm going to duplicate and hide. Now this one, I'm going to scale in a little bit and I'm going to make a hole, right? So I want to make the hole slightly um, like, maybe like here, that should be good. And then this trim will cover it. Uh, now I need to delete the inside. Because if I boolean uh, this cylinder, it's going to be hard then to make it seamless. But if I delete the inside faces and then extrude it, I can just extrude this out like this. Looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save. Before you do any kind of complicated operation like a, um, a boolean, you want to make sure to save. I'm going to select uh, both objects and then go to uh, let's see modeling mesh boolean union so it, it makes this and you're thinking well how is this useful well if I delete these edges right just double click them control delete they go away and I have a face that is on the surface I don't need the faces inside so I just select them you have to also make sure to check on things like this. There's a tiny face here, right there. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to this side and do the same. You don't need these faces. Like that. Press 3. You can see there's a little face there. You can select it, delete it. Now, the other thing is there's a lot of stray vertices left over on these edges. So if I double click uh, the inside edge loops like this, Pull control right click to vertices to vertices that's going to select all of the vertices here if i hit just delete that will delete all the stray vertices vertices that don't have more than two edges connected now we need to pick a couple of edges that we can use as like our anchors so i'm going to pick these two yeah like then uh, I know that where I'm gonna connect here, it's four this way, four this way, four this way, and four here. Now see how this is cutting through? That's okay, all we need to do is just reroute this edge loop around like this. Right, we can also select these two edges, shift, right click, slide edge tool, and just gently move it over like that. And then do the same on this side. Now, this is just mostly uh, aesthetically that I'm moving that other edge loop over but I just like the way that looks shift right click slide edge tool and then just middle drag and now I'll move it over like that we can then delete these edge loops here Control delete and also all of these edges that we have left over we can delete so on this side same thing now I do know that this right here is gonna create a long edge that it's on a rounded surface that may pinch a little bit but it's more mostly flat so I'm not really concerned about it so it's okay control delete will delete it now, if all you're doing is just connecting these edge loops like this, uh, the easiest way to do this would be and to use a bridge instead. So if I delete these, 
uh, faces here. Double click this edge loop and then deselect these right here, these two edges uh, there. And then if we do a bridge, it should connect. I missed. Like that. We can do the same on this side. And then we press 3, turn off this, and then see if there's any pinching. So this is what I was concerned about, this long edge here. But, you can see, it didn't do anything weird. It looks good. Now this hole, we can just close it up like this, bridge this, and then add... Uh, I don't need edge loops inside, but I do want to put an edge loop on here. This will just keep uh, it from rounding too much. Look at that. So now we have a hole that we can use for the uh, the gauges. And that cylinder that we unhid, we still have. So we can use that cylinder to make uh, the gauges. I'm gonna hide that. And now let's move on. Uh, we need to, by the way, you see how, uh, because we did a Boolean, uh, we uh, messed up the the shader assignment so we just need to right click assign existing and then select the latest Lambert now let's project it the topology looks pretty good uh, now let's do this one this one looks like it's tricky because it's got this one raised edge but it's actually pretty simple and I'll, I'll show you the process it, it the process is basically the same All right, so now we can do this bump out because we have the geo. And to do that, we're going to insert an edge loop with edge flow. This will round it a little bit. So it's lifting up like this. And then what we're gonna do is, basically what we're trying to do here is we need to line that up to this line and then we need to raise one side. Now, if I just um, add loops and raise it, it's not gonna give me exactly what I want uh, because I need to redirect some of these loops into here. And it's kind of hard to explain, so I'll show you. So these loops here, we want them to be spread out. Otherwise, they pinch. But these here, we if we raise one side, what's gonna happen is they're gonna go uh, it's just going to um, look too soft. So what I need to do now is find out where that raise is happening, which is here and here, like that. So I'm deleting uh, these two edges here. I'm gonna control and delete uh, this edge as well. And then I'm gonna add an edge loop very close. I'm gonna connect here and spread this out a little bit. So I'm holding C and then middle dragging on this edge. I can just spread out this here. Now I can select need to do the same on this side. This side it doesn't have to be perfect on this side because uh, you're not really gonna see it. I'm just going to ju uh, just add a couple loops just so they're there. Okay. Now I can select these spaces here. Shift greater than like this and like that. And this gives us the selection here. Now what I can do is add a lattice, which will look like this, but it's not really lined up to our surface. So if I move it, you can see that's what it's affecting. Sometimes uh, the lattice gets messed up and see it's actually not moving anything except the inside edges. So uh, I'm going to 
reapply the lattice. I don't know why this happens sometimes, but it's quite annoying. Okay, so what we'll need to do is uh, do this again and try with vertices. Pull control, right click to vertices, to vertices, like this, and then put a lattice on that. Now we select this lattice. Okay, now it's doing what it's supposed to do. And you can see uh, this is the edge we used for our um, where it's going to like bump out. So I'm going to take the lattice and select the base, then line this up, rotate it. And what I'm trying to do is line this up to this, to what we have here. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I select the lattice, I can add divisions. Let's see, I need one this way and one this way. Like the base again and then continue to line this up. We can test it by moving, and you can see we're missing some of these vertices. So we just select the lattice and the base together and we scale it. You want it to go larger than our selection. Okay. That looks good. So I'm going to add five divisions. I can then select these uh, lattice points. So right click lattice point, make sure I'm in object mode and then I can move them up. That. I'm just looking, to see how it's affecting. Don't worry about this. We'll fix that later. Select guys. And I don't want to go crazy with this. I want it to be subtle, but just a nice little feature. Now clear history. Press three. And that's what we get. So this part here, see it's going through. Uh, I'm going to fix it manually and all I need to do is basically just select these edges here. I use transform component just to push them up. Just get them out of the way. All right, so good. Uh, start making some of these dials. Let's see where we end up.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.